For over two decades, the American hip hop scene has been synonymous with jewelry. Chains, bracelets, rings, and perhaps most iconically, grills are all worn by the world's most famous rappers. But did you know a self-made Vietnamese man is one of the reasons behind the popularization of icing out your teeth with grills? Johnny Dang, also known as the King of Bling, built his empire by blending the worlds of hip hop with jewelry and diamonds. He has crafted a single piece of jewelry worth more than a million dollars. And today we get to learn about the history of Johnny Dang, get an inside look into his business, how he became the king of bling, and also speak with the new generation of rappers that is keeping the name Johnny Dang as relevant as it's ever been. This is the Buckingham Palace today, boy. Watch till the end if you want to see me play Johnny Dang and ping pong. All right, check this out, guys. Right now, we're outside Johnny Dang's legendary store here in Houston, Texas. Millions of dollars of diamonds have been sold here over the past decade, and we're gonna meet the man himself. Just walking into the store, smells like an empty bank account in here for yours truly. I do want to get some grills, though. That'd be crazy. Get some cubic zirconium going. All right. So these we're... are all pendants. Yep, these are all custom pieces designed here. Is that Super Saiyan 4 Goku, or, or is that uh, Gogeta? What is that? I think you know better than me. Let me see. Look at that, bro. This is uh, made for two chains right here. So I guess all real jewelry has this kind of like tin sound to it. Every time you hear the chains touching each other, you know it's gold. This right here was a belt buckle made for Floyd Mayweather. He's out here spending $6,000 on a belt buckle. If it's gold and diamonds, he needs a piece of it. You guys can't quite afford a $6,000 belt buckle. You can afford a $20 headband on the Buckinghamshop.com. Matter of fact, you get two for 20 shop now. One client asked Johnny to ice out a piece of bacon. Is there real bacon in there? Not real bacon, but we even added a bacon scent. <laughs> I can smell it. No way. That's bacon scented. That's bacon scented. I'm gonna show you the pieces before they're casted into gold. Beautiful, let's do it. So this is the wax we create. Once the client approves, we cast it into gold. So sometimes people come in here, flip flops, shorts, t-shirt. You won't expect them to really buy anything, but those are the big spenders you gotta yeah. watch out for. The people dressed in regular clothes. 18 years after Johnny Dang's popularity skyrocketed with their 2005 release of the song Grills by Nelly and Paul Wall. Another Texas native has made a hit single by drawing inspiration from the one and only Johnny Dang. In May of 2023, rappers That Mexican OT and Drody released a hit single titled Johnny Dang that actually features the legend himself, Paul Wall. Within three months, the video had racked up over 20 million views on YouTube and was trending on every single social media platform, proving that Johnny Dang and hip hop are a combination that's here to stay. By dumb luck, while I was at the shop above Johnny Dang's called The Closet with its owner, Mike Mills, that Mexican OT and Jody walked right in the door, giving me the opportunity to have this awesome conversation with them. Brandon Buckingham, that nice Mexican you, OT. How you doing, baby? How you feeling? Man, I can't complain, chilling. So right now we're in the closet, right? Johnny yeah. Dang's, the closet, they're, they're kind of a two for one special. What does this stores mean to you? Shit, I mean, fuck, it's, it's Johnny Dang, you know what I'm saying? And then you get, you got, you got a, a perk now, you know what I'm saying? You got the closet upstairs. But of course it's Johnny Dang, you know, the Texas legend himself, shout out to him. So I, I feel like, you know, it's a, something that everybody in Texas need to be grateful for. What made you want to name that song Johnny Dang that you have that's going so viral right now? He just, who he is for Texas, so it just made sense to name it that. You know what I'm saying? It's like I was, symbolic. I was a fan of him. I gotta get grills though, bro. I've seen one and it's, it's the Last Supper on his teeth. Jesus and all? Yeah, it's the Last Supper on his top teeth and oh, on the bottom shit. it was full diamonds. And just so you know, on the song Johnny Dang, guess who else is on that song? Drody. This is Drody? That's Drody right there. Yes, sir. Yeah, Drody man in the building. Yeah. What do you think Johnny Dang means to Houston? The Ice Man, the grills, you know? You know what I'm saying? Shit. I think he's one of the biggest ones on the grill. That's what, that's what I think about when I think of grills. Yeah, he's culture, man. He's the grill guy. He's the grill master here. You know, and that's part of Texas culture. So, you know, Johnny Dang means everything to Houston. He's an icon in, in not only in the United States, but, you know, from what he came from, you know? Like, he embodies someone who's self-made. Like, a lot of people think, oh, Johnny, he's been had it. Well, that's just because he's older and been in the game for a minute, but they don't realize that back in the day, you know, him and his brother, they used to travel around in a car, and they were doing jewelry sales out of the car, and Johnny had an, a license for an Uzi, so he had like this this infamous <laughs> Uzi on him, and he didn't speak good English either. Brandon, what's going on, man? Happy to be in your YouTube channel. 
Hey, follow my YouTube channel first. Johnny Dang's journey from his challenging past in Vietnam to his world-renowned jeweler status in America is one that is a testament to his perseverance. Born in 1974 in rural Vietnam as the Vietnam War concluded, his life was marked by limited prospects. In 1987, his father sought a better life for their family in America, leaving Johnny with the task of mastering jewelry craftsmanship. Settling in Houston, his father established a small jewelry shop, enabling the family to reunite nine years later. Arriving in Houston, Johnny faced humble beginnings. Working at a flea market jewelry repair shop for just $100 a month, he endured a transient lifestyle, often living in his car or crowded houses. By 1998, Johnny founded his own store, TV Jewelry, a nod to his name's initials and Vietnam. In 2000, a fortunate encounter with rapper Paul Wall transformed his destiny. Impressed by Johnny's innovative approach to grills, Paul recognized their potential. Leveraging his connections and helping him make sales, Paul introduced Johnny to influential artists like Slim Thug, Nelly, Mike Jones, Chameleonaire, and more, ultimately expanding his network greatly. The turning point arrived in 2000 2005, when Nelly and Paul Wall's song Grills surged in popularity, resulting in a high demand for Johnny's creations, specifically his grills. He transitioned from selling jewelry in local neighborhoods to operating a store in Houston's upscale Galleria Mall, adjacent to luxury brands like Neiman Marcus. Embracing the American dream, Johnny worked relentlessly, dedicating 18-hour days to his craft. With Johnny's dedication and restless work, he has grown his empire to over 80 employees in three different Houston locations. Houston, Texas, one stop shop, we have glow, design glow, we have jewelry. 18,000 square feet store. Nobody got better than that. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me see how it feel, man. Right. You know, that's how we do. All heavy eyes. This Jeez is one of your Christ. necklace. <laughs> Look at that pendant. Yeah. Paul Wall, when you guys first made that song, Grills, was that your idea or his idea? I start, I'm the jeweler. I'm Stura. I make a grill. Paul was DJ in the club. Rapper. Back then, you know, number one thing, I could not speak English well, just came from Vietnam first. But somehow I communicate with Paul well. He had a heavy English accent. So Johnny would be speaking in an accent that would be hard to understand from somebody who's there from Louisiana. They didn't understand each other. So I would be in there just kind of like diffusing misunderstandings. They would just be simple misunderstandings. No, no, this is what he mean. This is what he want. This is what, right. you know, something like that. So I say, cool, man. Why don't we team up together? You can be my translator. Sell grill in the club. Let's say he got the order from P. Daddy. He go back and tell me, oh, this is how P. Daddy won, but I want something else. So yeah, he just made the song and then it went viral and then grills have been history ever since? Yeah, a few years after we be partner, 0405, the song from Nelly. How much did the song help your sales? To the point I make like 480 grill a day. Now I make a lot of jewelry, cut them, but back then every day we just making grill. You have sore hands? It's good, you know. Now it's just counting money. It's a good thing that I am the jeweler, so it's easier for me to train or show my employees how to work. Let's put it this way. I don't think the owner of Tiffany know how to make jewelry. <laughs> they just hire people doing it. Shitting on them. <laughs> you play ping pong to us? I have a ping pong table yeah. up there. I'm good at ping pong. We nah. can challenge one game. I will rock you in ping pong. For real? Yeah. I beat Travis Scott for real. Houston versus Houston. Yeah. Not no cap. I'd be quavo. I might have no to cap. challenge you when this is over. We might have to finish this with the ping pong episode. Right, we're gonna do one ping pong challenge. I love it. Before we play ping pong, do you want to show me some of the stuff around the shop? Oh yeah, this is my jewelry. Most of custom jewelry here. Everything they think of, I can do, especially the grill. You know, you, you see a lot of copycat grill on the street now, mm -hmm. but it, you know how the street, they call street jeweler. It's so fake. They call me, it cannot be as good at like what I do, you know? This kind of quality, nobody can That's shining. think about that. Yeah. The one thing for me, if people came here, I do manufacture cuts to make. Whatever I have here, they buy. If not, I can make it. Let me show you my factory. You have time? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's go. All the celebrity that I do the jewelry, the grill for. Look at this wall. Yeah, look at PSA grill. The benefit of the more if she need a new grill, I just make it. She don't have to redo the more. This wall is insane. So you even long. you even have some uh, some people who have passed. You have Juice World here. You have JD Young in I here. I know, even my boy. But it's where we produce all kind of jewelry. How many people do you have like working full time? The jeweler plus staff, city five. That's gotta feel good, Johnny. And uh, you know a lot of payroll. So this is a pretty much how the grill look line before we set the diamond. See, we do the wax, we cast by the gold like this, and then that's my set diamond center. This is our diamond center, the U microscope, set the diamond. That's it, that's process. Do you have an all-star worker? They all my best. They've been with me for so long. How long have you been with here, man? Only 20 years. So when did you start working for me? 23 years ago. What has it been like working for Johnny the past 20 years? I'm very happy with him, good boss, everything is fine. Maybe 
I want more. I know there's 25 years more minimum. So you've been working for 12 years, right? Yeah. What is it like working at Johnny Dang's? Everything, bro. You know, you meet famous people. He's cool with you. He treats you like family. You know, that's why we, we work with here. I mean, this is like the Harvard of jewelry stuff, you know? Like, yeah, this I is mean, like yeah. top yeah. notch. Look at this. This is how we do first time with the earrings. We cast it out like 100 pair of earrings at a time. Basically, everything in house, we can, the production come out much cheaper. That's why I got the best quality plus cheaper price. What is it like going from back in the day when you were TV Johnny or Johnny TV, right? Mm -hmm. Selling stuff out of your car, traveling, having a shop in the mall, to now having your own place in Houston. It is like one of the yeah. premier spots and you have all these employees. Um, I feel blessed though. Of course, happy to be right here right now today. But uh, I, I got the same mentality, still keep working hard, be with her because I want my uh, my next generation just better than me. That's it, I want them to enjoy. Look at that. It's heavy jewelry, man. They do stuff here like polish and stuff. I would use the machine very well. The best thing I use a lot of uh, machines. They have a lot for my uh, labor. Like this machine can cast like one kilo go in three minutes. And how long would that take a human to do? It take a long time. A kilo go, it take you like hour to cast it. But on the machine, you can bigger flat, you can cast one time. So has the process of being a jeweler gotten a lot easier over the past few decades? The technology helped the jeweler like us a lot. Like the software to design, create a wax, the 3D printing machine. Because the 3D printing machine, when I can finish one product, I can pre-print it. It's like, what does this machine do? This one, after we cast out, they to clean the first step, so it's set time. You used to clean it by hand, now they have a machine no, cleaning it. So this is a process, right? How to do it, even the grill, we do the wax first. The piece, we use a 3D printing to print out the wax. Okay. And then we do casting, like the machine I told you, cast a kilo go, that's a casting, that's second step. Casting, that means we turn from the wax to the gold. And then my jeweler right there, cut down, clean up the gold, and turn to the diamond setter. You see, every diamond here is small size, only like 1.9, 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter. So they have a tiny prong to hold the diamond. You know, back then, I make one piece like this, it took me about like four weeks by hand. This one took maybe like three hours, four hours. Wow. To print out of this. So for those that don't know, what exactly makes diamonds so expensive? It's just rare. You know diamonds stay on the earth for hundreds of thousand years. Imagine you got a big rock like 10,000 some ton and find some small diamond like this. What's the wildest use of diamonds you've ever seen? That's bling bling, that's it. It's all jewelry? That's all jewelry. What did you think about Lil Uzi Vert's diamond in his head? That's a little bit crazy. Even if he gave me that order, I couldn't try. Is there a specific customer that you like working with the most? Honestly, I love to work with all the rappers. Uh, like uh, the baby, Ricky Ross, all like Flame Weathers. I'm very lucky, and maybe because of the reason I treat all the rappers like families. There are so many hip hop legends from all across America that hold Johnny at such a high regard. Just look at this little compilation of all the people he's interacted with. Diamond Boy! Diamond Boy! Diamond Boy! Bang Bang! Johnny Dang! Yo, Dang! We the best! Thank you, sir. Ice trade again. Ice trade again. Gucci Ben Dumma. Gucci Gucci Ben Dumma. Meet me in the gallery on the third floor. Stay iced up like TV Johnny. Huh. Johnny Dane, King of Blaine. I just went for the potato. I love to work with celebrity. Most of actually, they, they live nice, you know. A lot of people get got money, but they treat like the jeweler like trash. Make my shit, and they make it crazy. When you think Johnny Dang, you think hip hop, right? Were you a big hip hop or rap fan before you made jewelry? I came here when I was 23 years old, and I have no idea about hip hop music. The only people, the singer I know, you ask Britney Spears. Do you have any words of inspiration for people out there that? might be broke, they might have just came from a different country to America and they want to make it in this world? The most problem people, the young kid thinking, they are too good for this job. They don't even start working yet and feel like, man, I'm gonna, I'm not to do this one because I don't get paid enough. Don't worry about that, man. If you do your best, just hard working, be honest, you make it one day. I used to be clean up, I used to do the $500 for the first six months I make. I'm happy. If you're happy what you do, the bonus, the bless come to you. A lot of people not success because they feel like, uh, let's say they just go work, even you work Madonna, $8 an hour. Man, I better than this quick. You don't know. You might get miss somebody, do something crazy Madonna, or you might own a franchise one day. I agree with that as well. Like on the YouTube tip, if you want to be a YouTuber, you should start now. Why not? After I see you, I want to do my channel too. I want to make money on YouTube channel. Why not? Never too late. No matter what it is in life, if you try something, you fail, you just pivot and try something else and keep trying. Yeah, keep trying. The only thing is to 
don't give a opportunity got open door for everyone. The only way you can get it is because you give up so early. But the people want to see, can you beat me in one volley of ping pong? Yeah, I want to see it. Yes, let's go, diamond boy. Now Johnny Dang may have beaten big time famous people in ping pong like ASAP Rocky, Travis Scott, and a little flip flop, but he never faced a cold ass rider before. And on them sticks, on them paddles, I'm a real competitor. So I wanted to go toe to toe with the young man, take him to the limit. This is how it went. I think I'm pretty good at ping pong, but he seems so confident. I'm afraid he's gonna have like some crazy ability to slam or put spin on it. And he's about to own me, but I'm just gonna try to keep the ball on the table. That's a lesson in life. So is he is he about to like really like destroy me? He, he's really good, but I mean, if you get him, we, like that? We, we, we gonna see. We gonna he's see. He's being so confident that he's yeah. making me like feel like I'm not like that. Well, I've seen him lose once before, so you never know. I challenge Johnny Dang to a ping pong match. We're gonna see who's the better ping pong player. Uh, I just try, you know, if you can beat me, you can get diamond necklace. Oh, a full diamond necklace if Brandon Buckingham wins this. Oh. Ooh, that's 2-1, two 2-1. One. Two one. My bad, my bad, 2-1. Uh. He was fucking with you. John, you don't want him to have that free necklace, huh? Yeah, I don't want to get free necklace. I just try hard, man, you know what I'm saying? No free necklace for Brandon. He has a crazy slam. Johnny yeah. Dang has a crazy ping pong slam. Ooh, Brandon's warming up here. Brandon's warming up. Oh. Almost, oh yeah. I see you, John. I see you, John. Ready? Oh, give me that. Give me with the threes. Oh, I tell you, he's fucking with you. Oh. Uh, Damn. Yeah. So in damn near quadruple overtime, 14 to 16, Brandon Buckingham himself defeats Johnny Dang in a highly contested ping pong matchup. You won? Did you let that happen, Johnny? Johnny, yeah. you got you own a free necklace. I know, yeah, you got a free necklace. Uh, <laughs> I can take this home? Hey, I know. <laughs> 300K. Thank you so I'll much, man. I appreciate you playing me. Good game, we have fun. We got a game, you know. We're gonna have to run it back. We're gonna have to do two out of three one day, but I did beat yeah. the legendary Johnny Dang. You gave you us know, an I awesome could, episode, he, so. He the guest, so you have to guess how to win, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He told me he was gonna give me a chain. We settled on a gold grill, and the next day I came back to get my molds done. Hey, Brandon is being Houstonized. I don't even know if that's a word, but he's being Houstonized. Yeah. Bite down. <laughs> Open up, Brandon. Damn, bro. It looks good, man. I got nice teeth. Yeah, yeah. Good impression. They say I have horse teeth. Maybe a, like a cow. That's better. That's better. <laughs> Cows are more intelligent, I heard. So you're going permanent with these grills, right? No. No? <laughs> no? I got to go home and hug my mom, man. I can't. Right. So we got a perfect impression of the top, and we got a perfect impression of the bottom. And we're going to put it into production first thing in the morning. With Johnny's production, it might be ready in one day. So what's happening, my brother? We're adding water to the mold. That way, you know, overnight, before it gets put into production in the morning, it doesn't dry out. Because if you take a mold and you put it to the side, and you let it wait. Moisture will escape from it and it will shrink. So it will give us an uh, inaccurate shape of his teeth. By the time we start working on it tomorrow, the shape is gonna be absolutely perfect. It's gonna be a perfect fit for his teeth. Thank you for stopping by, Brandon. Yeah. And Thank you guys Stop so by soon. Yeah, you're the best at what you do. Thank you. Yeah. I wanna give a special shout out to Mike Mills for making this episode possible. As always, the extended cut is on Patreon. And if you wanna buy any cool new merch, like this Ice Gang Syndicate shirt, it'll be available very soon on the buckinghamshop.com. I appreciate you guys very much and hope you have a wonderful day. Peace. All right, gang, check it out. Today we got an action-packed video hanging out with the one and only Johnny. Oh, man, my shoes. Cool, it doesn't really matter what I do because I'll always stay stuck as a fool. I'll never be cool. Don't get what I want, I'm a new no rule. I'm way lamer than you, I'll never be cool. All the cool kids got their backpacks. Me, I made fun of and laughed at. I want to get past that. But I'm whack and I rap at a last, always last with an ass hat. And that's just business as usual. No new friends, only more new funerals.